OSU and focus on school and be there with a bunch of like geniuses. Cause yeah. If you get in on the low end of OSU, the really smart people at OSU are just geniuses. Yeah. Or even like, cause I don't plan on going to like Yale or like MIT no. No, or yeah. anything like that. Anyways, but like on a smaller scale, mm-hmm. there's or like I've thought about going to like Cincinnati. Like it's still a great yeah, school. Yeah. Still really smart people there, but it's a step lower. And you'd be higher up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rather than being lower at a bigger school. Yeah. You, know, you can definitely get your degree and still do great things. Yeah. With you know, that it's like degree. you have statistics of how people like excel at a smaller school at the same rate that same rate that people excel at a bigger school. So if you're top dog at a smaller school, you're gonna excel. If you're top dog at a bigger school, you're gonna excel. But if you're like on the lower end of a bigger school, you, your chances are just less likely. Yeah. yeah, it was like an insane drop off. I think it was Princeton and like Brown and MIT and Yale that they did those at like the mm-hmm. really like top ten prestigious schools. Yeah, and it was close to like three point three or something for the top ninety nine percentile, like which like just the best of the best. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it was like the not top uh, twenty, right? Yeah, yeah. Top twenty schools, and the best person there at like same. two point like four or something ridiculous. Like yeah, they're like two point six, and at like a not top twenty compared to like Yale. Exactly. And they still have like it was like a point eight difference, and it's the and that's not even like an average school to that. Right, like right. A decent school to that. Yeah. Like it's the worst mm-hmm. of the worst. Yeah, yeah. Supposedly worst of the worst. Yeah. yeah. We never really talked about the painters. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. From like the salon and. Yeah, that was actually a very weird. I don't know if I, I struggled to understand that. I liked it. I don't think I read. What was, chapter was that? It was chapter three, maybe four. It was. I like vaguely remember that. I wrote about it. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll tell you about it. So it was like. I think Monet. Oh, yeah, and how like the galleries and all the that were. Impressionists like, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the it salon was, just made people just kill themselves because right they didn't make it or something yeah mm-hmm. it's yeah i'm trying i think it was a two-part chapter so that might have been the one with david because they're yeah, cause they were comparing there. caroline yeah to the like the the up-and-coming painters trying to get into like the big salon or whatever well, yeah that that was the uh that's how they brought in the, the big, big fish pond. yeah mm-hmm. big yeah. fish small pond small fish or little yeah. fish big pond <coughs> yeah that was a weird chapter it that threw me off a little. I, because the big fish uh, portion of it was like yeah. The art part reiterated. was kind of hard to understand a little bit. Like if I feel like it would have been just been better if they did the college analogy on yeah. its own. Mm-hmm. But I kind of appreciated it a little though. Like it mm-hmm. wasn't. Yeah, I guess it just like okay. kind of spoke yeah, to it. how like it's consistent throughout time. I guess, but mm-hmm. yeah, like kind of the history repeats itself ordeal. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I guess the only thing we haven't other than, yeah, that, that was one of them, but the only other thing we ever talked about is Jay. Yeah, the um, doctor. Oh, yeah. Lost, I thought that was a good... We touched on it, actually. He lost his parents. Oh, yeah. Okay. He said, like, his, oh. his... Was it his maid? Was that, like, his, oh, yeah, his yeah. true mother? Uh-huh. And then his... Or it wasn't fired. his true mother. But yeah. It was his, like, mother mother. And then... Mm-hmm actually blood mother mm-hmm. fired her because he couldn't pay for her and she's, he said he never forgave his mom for that his blood mom for that yeah. because she was didn't take care of him or anything but it was she did what she did because she loved him like she was working jobs to take mm-hmm. care of him mm-hmm. but couldn't spend time with him which is what he wanted but he yeah. didn't understand at the time that that was 100% because she the whole reason she did that was because she cared about him yeah yeah, yeah. It was completely because she cared about him mm-hmm. um Oh yeah, and then that it said that kind of affected him later in life when he did like the testing on kids and stuff. Yeah, that, that was a little weird for me. I didn't really like see how that like, because I get that he was going against the status quo and like pushing the limits of medicine and all that, but like I didn't really see how. Well, I mean, I guess I guess it was really hard for him because like obviously kids' lives are on the line, and he's like, completely just going against what Ed, like, what everyone in the medical community said, mm-hmm. but I just feel like that was more of a, 
that wasn't really an underdog. I mean, obviously not an underdog story, but like going against the grain type of thing. I feel like yeah. it was just more like they all had a common goal. That was the was, leukemia part, right? Yeah. And then nobody wanted him to do that, but yeah. even though he did it, he saved tons of lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess you could say the disadvantage was that people were dying as he was testing it, but then the advantage would be that it saved millions of lives after that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little weird. Like, it talked about the bone marrow samples. Oh, and like that was that awful. Was, yeah, like, it, it made me really imagine, like, when he said about putting, like, the giant needles into their, like, kids. Yeah, into their shit. Into their shits shits like, and stuff. Because the anesthesia or whatever just was the same was, thing. Yeah, it was the same shot. Like, oh, that, but it was, like, you know it's for a good cause, but can you really do it? That kind of thing. Like, yeah. they talk about... Um, like where the like, risk will reward yeah. like well and it's even talked about in, like today's world like with abortion mm-hmm. and stuff how people that say like if abortion's going to happen they should use the babies for research afterwards yeah where it's like a lot of the religious community is completely against the abortion in the first place and the like stem cell research research after they yeah are aborted yeah but it's like but the re- religious yeah. people's argument is like oh it's like a person, but like if it's a if it's a dead yeah. body, then it's like Women. yeah, it's the like science you do that on normal people, like on like full living people. So like, what's the issue? But yeah, it's like like the scientific aspect wants to push for more, in, um, I guess, just like the investigative kind of and figure out what they can do with it. Mm-hmm. And if it's already like if it's an opportunity, like and it's the same thing. I would the kids are already dying why not try to use them to solve right problems later in life like mm-hmm. and that's the same thing if they're already the babies have already passed away then why wouldn't they use them to further science yeah because mm-hmm. yeah. like in the moment it would be seen as like awful and like how could you be doing this but like it's like really hard to like i don't know if i could make that like choice of being that doctor mm-hmm. or whatever and saying are we gonna like essentially sacrifice these kids for the betterment of and the like lives of kids down the road or are we gonna work our hardest to save these kids now yeah. with what we have like it's just it's super mm-hmm. like you just I don't know what I would you choose you have to leave it up to the parents I think yeah, yeah. well that's no one's gonna want to say oh I want you to take the last month of my kid's life and spend testing on him well, I guess I mean like to save if you have a drug that works like five percent of the time, you could say I would think maybe I'd try like yeah. if you have something else in mind then sure. Yeah. Because five percent is not likely, so if it's gonna Yeah, I get what you're saying. Some parents might be like, if it's gonna be that way anyways, why not try to save people in the future so their other parents don't have to go through what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. They talked about that in the book too, like saving the lives that are, um, it wasn't that chapter, it was, uh, it was a different chapter, but they talked about, um, the, uh, I just talking about the law implemented, that was like the triple, are you talking about the law, right? I think it was, Wait, it was like a triple thing where you have three strikes, and oh yeah, but the criminals and stuff, is that what you're, I think, I'm trying, it was, and he said he was saving time. like six lives a day, but really, it was just making things worse. Yeah, and it was something like people that. in prison for like stealing a slice of pizza. Is right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like a touchy thing too. Like, do you do you put someone in prison? Well, like, because obviously I think it was like one major offense, right? And then, like, if they had one major offense, they had two more strikes. Yeah. So the first offense it had to be like murder they, or like rape or something. Or like that. It was no, it was like anything, anything was stealing anything, anything at all. And then the second one, if they repeat that offense, they double the time they did the first time, or double the sentence. So say it was like a five-year sentence, they do ten years. Third offense, so like you steal a piece of pizza mm-hmm. or something, like twenty years down the road when you're out of jail, yeah, or something, you get accused and you are guilty of it. Steal a slice of pizza, you go to jail for a minimum of twenty-five years. Yeah, unpopular opinion. I actually agree with that law. Yeah, I do too. I think I, I would say that odd ones like stealing a piece of pizza 20 years down the road probably never happened right 
I don't know. It's like if you murder someone, you obviously should go to jail. Mm -hmm. And if they're only doing five years for that or something, I think they should do more. And if, if they end up stealing something like a candy bar, that's still breaking the law. So right, right. I would say that they deserve prison time if they're just going to continue to break the law, no matter yeah. what it is. Yeah, because that behavior only just compounds. So. Mm -hmm. I can see with, well, I, I guess nowadays it's hard to compare because with murder, you don't just get five years if it's intentional. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you if there's conspiracy to kill, like you you wanted to do it. Oh, for sure. You planned your murder. It's going to be like at least probably 15, 20 years or 20. Like yeah. Most of the time it ends up in life if it's like a confirmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Confirmed like you wanted to murder them and it wasn't like a reaction murder or something. Mm -hmm. Right, should we just sum this up or something? Yeah, I guess. Sure. What would be the main... I mean, we talked about this in the beginning, what we thought the main takeaways were. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I had a kind of change. question kind of to close out, I guess. Okay. Like, I said, is Gladwell writing to give, I guess, hope to the underdog, or is it to push the, like, the favorite, or the um, the favorite in the matchup to, like, a new limit? So like, a good question, actually. So, like, I would say it's pushing the underdog as well as the guy, I guess. Because he's writing to say that, the un like, David and Goliath is based on how the underdog can win no matter the circumstances. But then if you're also the giant in the situation, then, I mean, it's the same same kind of principle, right. you know? But then, it, yeah, because then it puts you in the underdog position because everyone is like, oh, this underdog. Mm -hmm. And then you're just kind of like... Well, I gotta do something too, but yeah, you need motivation. Right, yeah. the underdog has motivation from being the underdog. Yeah, so it's saying don't be a giant, you know. Yeah. Can you can you see that? Because it's kind of confusing. Yeah, yeah. Like put yourself in the underdog shoes, even if you're not the underdog. Mm -hmm. But I don't, know, so I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I had a really good comparison. Is it like? Yeah, can I can you read yeah, the yeah. question again? I said, is Gladwell writing to give hope to the underdog or to push the favorite to new limits? Or I guess like to push the favorite to... Oh, okay. So yeah, I think this kind of touches on how, um, at least in my perspective, like when you read the book and it talks about uh, the underdog having like a good chance always, mm -hmm. why isn't that the norm now? Like, mm -hmm. do you think it's because he thinks it should be changed? He views the underdog should not be the underdog anymore. And yeah. Giving hope to the underdog is him saying the underdog really isn't an isn't underdog. Thing. It's right. always even, or maybe the underdog can be the Goliath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely know, I see what you mean, like, because then it gets into, the, like, the realm of, like, is being an underdog even a thing? Yeah. Because if money is what, like, you're, just for an example, if money is what you're pushing for, and you're poor, like, we're disregarding the whole, like, um, inverted U and, like, the climate, or the 74 mark or whatever, like, yeah. like, is it an underdog, like, are you an underdog if you don't have money? Because then, like, you are, have the advantages, right, the experiences, right, I guess it, in my opinion, it'd just be different, like, I guess the breakdown at that point just relies on a, it's just the person. Yeah. the person's choice because yeah. you're given the ability to take what you have you're given a gift that you can either take advantage of mm -hmm. or lay waste to yeah. everybody has the same opportunity but it's just where you start and yeah. what you do with what you have yeah, yeah. so it's just relies on people at that point